rev matching gear changes and heel and toe. What is it and why should you do it? Rev matching your gear changes is quite difficult and takes a lot of practice, particularly heel and toe. More on that one later. Also, it's not really necessary if you want to be a safe, competent driver. You don't need to do it, but if you're able to do it, it can make you smoother and faster. This is my attempt at explaining rev matching. The first thing you need to understand is that you don't always go to lower gears uh, to go slower. Sometimes you'll choose a lower gear to speed up. For example, if you wanted to overtake a car, you're better off being in the lowest gear possible so you have more power and a burst of acceleration. Lower gears give you more power. When you change down a gear though, the car wants to slow down. I know you have more power, but it wants to slow down because when you go down a gear, your gear speed goes up, but your engine speed stays slow. And when you lift the clutch up to connect your gears with the engine, your slow engine is gonna slow down your gears, which in turn goes to your wheels. So that causes you to slow down and that takes time. And if you want it to be smooth, you're gonna to have to hold the clutch on the bite point to give the clutch some time to rev match the gears and the engine. And that is actually how most people drive. Most people use the clutch to do all of the rev matching for them. Trouble with clutch rev matching, as I've just said, is it slows the car down and it takes time if you want it to be smooth. If you were to come off the clutch quickly, the fact one thing is spinning fast and the other thing is spinning slow, as they connect, if you connect them together quickly, that's gonna send a big shock through the car. But if you rev match manually using the gas, the clutch doesn't have to bring the engine speed up to the gear speed. You can push the clutch down, go into second gear, which makes your gear speed high, give some gas as well, which also makes your engine speed high, so they're spinning at the same speed, then you can come off the clutch quite quickly without any shock going through the car and without any additional engine braking trying to slow the car down. That way, you can go down a gear without slowing down, you can go down a gear quickly, and you're ready for that burst of acceleration to pass whatever it is you need to pass. You don't have to rev match when you go up gears, because as you go up a gear, your gear speed comes down. And as your clutch is down to change up a gear, your engine speed is also gonna go down. So they're gonna meet each other kind of in the middle anyway, which is why when you go up gears, it's quite easy to come off the clutch smoothly. Whereas when you go down a gear, it's really hard to come off the clutch smoothly because the difference between engine speed and gear speed is at its greatest after you change down a gear, particularly if you've changed down more than one gear the clutch has got more rev matching to do, which means you have to hold it on the bite point for longer to allow it to rev match. Or you can press the gas and rev match yourself. But rev matching yourself using the gas pedal is really hard because you've got to give just the right amount of gas to make the engine speed the same as the gear speed. I've got some tips for you later on in this video that should help you with that. Firstly, I'm gonna demonstrate rev matching using the clutch. This green thing here is to stop the sun going on this camera and ruining the image, in case you're wondering what that's for. So I'm doing 35 miles an hour in a 40 at the moment, and I wanna go down to second. And I'm gonna use the clutch to rev match. So I come off the gas, clutch down, into gear two, and as I lift the clutch to the bite point, I'm at the bite point now, the engine speed starts to go up to meet the gear speed, but the wheel speed comes down. I'm down to about 21 miles now. There you go, it's just finished now. It's finished rev matching. The revs have stopped going up, and now I can use the gas to carry on. So that was very smooth. I've rev matched very smoothly, but it took a long time, and the car slowed down a lot. It's not ideal slowing down that much if you want to select a lower gear to accelerate quickly. Okay, you could come off the clutch a lot quicker, but then it's gonna be really jerky. This time I'm gonna rev match with the gas pedal manually. Take note of how quickly my revs go up here, the engine speed, and how little speed I lose here when I go down to second gear. I'm currently in fourth gear. So I come off the gas, clutch down. As I go into second, I rev the engine, and I can pretty much 
drop the clutch, I pretty much dropped the clutch there and it was really smooth because the clutch had no work to do. And you could see I barely slowed down there at all. I wasn't looking at the numbers, but I'm sure you could see the numbers as I did it. I'm sure they didn't drop much at all as I did that manual rev match. And as a result, because I was in second gear, if I needed to accelerate, I could have accelerated quite quickly without having to wait for that clutch to do its job. So you could really see the difference there. When I rev matched using the clutch, it took a long time and the car slowed down a lot. But when I rev matched using the gas, it was very quick and the car didn't slow down much at all. Here are some tips to help you do it. First tip is how much gas to give. And you've got to use trial and error to learn your individual car but you're looking to increase your revs by about 3,000 typically. If you can increase your revs by about 3,000 RPM, that's generally a good start. In a turbo petrol, I'd probably give about 70% gas for a moment. So literally just 70% off. In a turbo diesel, I'll probably pause a moment as I press the gas. So it'll be 70% on, off. So this is turbo petrol, this is turbo diesel. So it's not even a second pause, it's literally just a little bit longer because it takes longer for the diesel to rev. And if the car didn't have a turbo, it would probably be like 40% gas for even less time. But it does depend on your engine setup. They do vary wildly, but you're looking to blip the engine speed up by about 3000 RPM quite quickly. Next tip, your clutch finds it much easier to bring revs down than it does to bring revs up. So when you're manually rev matching using the gas pedal, I recommend giving too many revs. It's always good to give a bit extra, a bit more than you think you need, because when you come off the clutch, your clutch is gonna find it much easier to bring those revs down than it would if you didn't give enough gas and your revs were a bit low and your clutch still had to bring those revs up for you. Another tip is when to give the gas, and that's as you're changing your gear stick. So what I do is I come off the gas, clutch down, and as I move the gear stick, I'll then blip the throttle, giving the revs, so that by the time I finish moving the gear stick, my revs are up and I'm ready to release the clutch. And probably one of the most important tips of all is be off the gas as you come off the clutch. And that's because the clutch still does a lot of the rev match for you. You blipping the throttle to bring the revs up is assisting the clutch. It's making light work for the clutch. If you stay on the gas as you lift the clutch, you're putting power into the engine and the clutch finds it harder to finish the rev match for you. How a manual rev match using the gas works is you blip the throttle, the gas pedal, give too many revs, come off the gas and as the revs are falling, as you bring the clutch up, the clutch finds it really easy to put those revs exactly where they need to be really quickly, which is why you can pretty much drop the clutch without any jerkiness and without slowing down much. Having said that, if you give a ridiculous amount of revs, let's say you need three and you gave six and lifted the clutch up quickly, you probably would still feel a jerk through the car. So here are some demonstrations of me doing rev matching. I'm in fourth gear. I wanna go down the second. So I blipped the throttle as I was braking there. That's heel and toe, I'll show you that later. And now I'm in second gear ready to accelerate, but I can't accelerate because it's quite narrow and there's a car coming. But now I can accelerate quite quickly. Up into third, let's say I wanna go back down the second. Off gas, clutch down, blip the throttle, off the clutch really really smooth that was ridiculously smooth and my revs are up i'm in a lower gear and i've got power oh, i've just come into a 60 i'm in third gear there's a sharp bend up ahead but anyway i'm going to go down into second gear so off gas clutch down into second flip the throttle off clutch really really smooth now i know there's no cyclist in front right now let's pretend there is so i'm in third gear doing 20 miles an hour and i want second so off the gas, clutch down into second, blip the throttle, off clutch, and now I'm ready to put the power down and accelerate past that cyclist, that pretend cyclist that doesn't exist. Can't conjure them up on demand, unfortunately. Now, during those examples, you may have noticed I used heel and toe, and that was because I wanted to rev match whilst I was braking. 
what happened was is I was slowing down for the bend and I was changing down a gear for that bend. This is where manually rev matching is not as important because you are slowing down anyway so it doesn't matter if lifting the clutch up is going to slow you down a little bit more in fact it can be helpful but it is nice to rev match in those situations sometimes because it means you can change gear more quickly and you're able to get on the power sooner too because you spent less time changing gear it's particularly helpful if you're a spirited keen driver and how heel and toe work is you have to blip the gas pedal, give some revs whilst you're braking. So you're braking for something and you wanna do a rev match. So how do you do that? Well, here's my foot and it's either on the gas or the brake, but there's a way to do both. And if you put your heel of your foot in between the two, you can actually brake and use the side of your foot to rev the engine like so. It's called heel and toe, but you don't actually use your heel and your toe because that's not really possible. It's about using half of your foot for your brake and half of your foot for your gas. Sometimes putting the heel of your foot underneath the gas pedal can make it easier. Pressing the brake and then just rolling your foot over to one side like this to give some gas. Now, it's important to remember this video is all about advanced driver skills. You don't have to heel and toe and you don't have to rev match with the gas. Heel and toe is particularly hard. I've been doing it for about 14 or 15 years and I can still get it wrong sometimes, particularly when I change car. What's really hard about heel and toe is when you press the gas, keeping the brake steady because you're increasing the gas, but you don't want to increase the brake. What normally happens when you get heel and toe wrong is you press the gas with the side of your foot, but you press the brake a bit more as well and you end up slowing down a lot more than you anticipated. So if you are practicing heel and toe, do it when there's no one behind you, do it when you're on your own because you may brake more erratically. So here are some examples of heel and toe. I want third gear for that bend, I'm in sixth. So I'm starting to brake, clutch down into third, rev the engine on the side of my foot, I can drop the clutch very smooth, back on the gas to go around the bend. It's always better to have power as you go through the bend, better than braking as you go through the bend. You'll have a lot more control and the car will be much more balanced. Here's another example coming up. I want second gear there, I'm in fourth, so I'm braking for the bend, clutch down into second, revving the engine as I was changing gear, drop the clutch, back on the power as I go through the bend, back up to third. I'm in fifth gear and I've got a third gear bend, so I'm braking for the bend, clutch down into third gear as I rev the engine with the side of my foot, drop the clutch, back on the gas as I go through the bend. Going back up to fourth gear now, I know I've got a second gear bend there that I need to slow down quite a lot for, so I'm starting to brake, clutch down as I go in a second I'll blip the throttle with the side of my foot not a good one that time because I blipped the throttle a bit too early so the revs were a bit low by the time I lifted the clutch up it wasn't terrible but it wasn't perfectly smooth like the other examples I gave there there was a slight uh, jerk through the car as the clutch had to lift the revs instead of bringing the revs down when you lift the clutch up to the bite point you always want to have the revs a bit too high it's much easier for that clutch to bring revs down than it is to bring revs up. Something I noticed whilst doing those demonstrations is that I tend to rev the engine as I'm finishing my gear change as opposed to as I'm starting my gear change. If I try and rev the engine as I'm starting my gear change, the revs drop back down again by the time I lift the clutch. So make sure your engine revs are up as you finish your gear change. So that's how you manually rev match using the gas and how you rev match whilst your foot's on the brake, heel and toe. Why do you need to do it though? Well, you don't really need to do it. It is an advanced driving skill if you want to get the most out of a manual car. On the road, it's not that necessary. It's much nicer to do it because you can change to a lower gear without getting engine braking, which sometimes you want to be fair. Sometimes you don't want to rev match. Sometimes that engine braking is helpful but there are times when it's not helpful, particularly if you want to overtake something, so you need a lower gear to overtake something, or if you're slowing down for a bend and you want to get on the gas pedal a bit earlier to go through that bend instead of having to wait a long time for the clutch to rev match for you. So rev matching is more of a nicety for the road, allowing you to get on the power sooner and come off the clutch more quickly. And also it sounds quite cool. 
if you like that kind of thing and if you've got a nice sounding car. Where rev matching really helps is if you drive your car on the limit on a track, say on a track day. There are two advantages to using rev matching when you're driving a car on its limit. Firstly, as you already know, you can get on the power sooner. I'm sure you understand how that can help if you're driving a car on its limit. But less obviously is the fact that you won't have additional engine braking. A car's brakes are set up very specifically. They have a certain amount of braking on the front and a certain amount of braking on the rear. And that's important to maintain control whilst you're braking, particularly under harsh braking, to give your tires the best chance of slowing the car down. If you add additional braking to the front wheels or the rear wheels by using the clutch to rev match for you, as you know, when you use the clutch to rev match, you get a lot of additional engine braking, that's gonna unbalance the car. So in a rear wheel drive car, you're gonna be slowing down the rear wheels more and in a front wheel drive car, you're gonna be putting additional braking to the front wheels. In a four wheel drive car, well, it's a bit more complicated, it depends on how the differentials are set up. But either way, that's not ideal. You don't want additional braking going to the front or the rear, because that's gonna upset the car's balance. And it can be the difference when you're driving a car on its limit, it can be the difference between going round that corner and skidding off that corner. Well, I hope this video has helped you understand what rev matching is and what heel and toe is. If you think it does, please give the video a thumbs up and please check out my sponsors in the description, Collingwood and Confused.com. If you're learning to drive and you want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood are exceptionally good because you can insure yourself on their car without affecting their policy. And if you use the link in the description, not only does it support this channel, but there is also a benefit to you. If you want to insure your own car, I have found Confused.com one of the most competitive sites out there when I've done my own quotes, particularly for new and inexperienced drivers. Using the link in the description again will support this channel. If you want to see my future videos, please subscribe. And until the next one, cheerio.